So the number one tip we're going to give you this week is how to get back to the basics. You've been asking us for sales tips, sales ideas, and giving you some help in your marketing. My name is Barry Horvath, and this is Moving Forward TV with your local market update. And I am Dylan Gaston. Thank you so much for joining us. So, yes, as we said earlier, it wait, is... Wait, 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 wait. back up right away. That's our first blooper. What do you mean, what as do? we said? You didn't say <laughs> nothing. You sat there right. and said nothing. Right. I did all the talking. You're right. You're right. All right, go ahead. Okay, see, I, I just wanted to be corrected. clear. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. And during like, the break, he said to me, were you going to say anything? And I went, no, you did good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to add. Right. I'm good. Ask her about closing costs, and you can't <laughs> get her to stop. I know. Go on and on. That's different. So speaking of closing costs, so we oh, had a no. really nice, I think, a really good lunch and learn. A lot of positive feedback. We did it on closing costs and title stuff. Yeah. Yes, it was um, good. It was good, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So any of you who are wondering what we're talking about, it's our lunch and learn. Yeah. So we get we get a lot of feedback. We do take surveys. <laughs> um, you all give us questions. I know we try to answer our phones every single time, but the number one thing everyone is always looking for, no matter what business you're in, is help in you know sales, how to sales, marketing, how to serve the customer, right. how to make your business grow, how to make more money. Aren't we all looking for all of that, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and and more and, money, less work. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So work smarter is yeah. what it comes yeah. down to, right? Yeah, and I think it's all about those consistent habits. And yes, we, it is. And we talk about you know we were just talking about our lunch and learn. <laughs> it's a consistent habit for us, mm -hmm. and. Why do we get 70 to 100 people to show up every month? Because we've been consistently doing it right. the same way every month. It's a habit. And a lot of you who come to it know how great they are. Yes. I think they're great. Yes. And there's always great information. We have power speakers. Um, uh, yeah, but, I don't think we've ever had anybody disappointed at all. Everybody always gets even a little tiny nugget out of it. Something. Sometimes you, always you get, get a something. big nugget. Sometimes, sometimes you, you get. Exactly. But you know exactly. what? We've been working on that for years, and it's, right. we do it consistently. It hasn't, yeah, it didn't start off like this. No, it, <laughs> it didn't. started off with three of us sitting in a room. <laughs> but it's a lot of work, and I always say, I was just telling you, you know, sometimes I dread it because all of the preparation we have to go through to put it together. Mm -hmm. Find a guest speaker. Make sure the guest speaker is coming. Right. Find a good topic to talk about. Get all that audio equipment gear there. Um, the TV. Make sure there, the TV the, gets there right. and set up. Before and that, we it have was our, the monitors and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And and the folders have to be there. Right. And the sponsors have to be on the flyer. And it has to go out on the email every single week. And we got to have it on social media and all our pages. And and then we got to make <laughs> phone calls to 150 <laughs> of you to just beg you to come for free lunch. Oh, please. <laughs> I know, for great information. I know. But anyway. All right. But we saw the end, the result of it. Oh, you jumped. <laughs> from the beginning. Yeah, so I love Stephen Covey, so I know that's what you want to talk about. Yes, so this week, so that is what we're talking about. So um, those of you who have heard of him, his name is Stephen Covey, and he wrote... Stephen R. Covey. Stephen R. Covey. And Stephen R. Covey wrote a book called... This, he wrote lots of books, actually, but this one sold something like 25 gajillion copies, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Excuse gajillion me. with a G. <laughs> Can we look that up? With a G can we a get day. a can we get a Google answer on that, please, <laughs> from the back office? A gajillion. So, um, the, you know, I want to I want to I, I want to read something because I think it's um, it's kind of what, what 
it's sort of what perked my interest in um, in reading this book. Um, it's called. This was in a book that I'm I'm a, a study that I'm doing right now, but it's um, a, all has to do with your mindset. So, what type of mindset do you have? And it's scarcity versus abundance. And I thought this was really good right out of his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Most people are deeply scripted in what I call the scarcity mentality. They see life as having only so much, as though there were only one pie out there. And if someone were to get a big piece of that pie, it would mean less for everyone else. The scarcity mentality is the zero-sum paradigm of life. People with a scarcity mentality have a very difficult time sharing recognition and credit, power or profit, even with those who helped in the production. They also have a very hard time being genuinely happy for the success of other people. On the abundance mentality side, on the other hand, flows out of a deep inner sense of personal worth and security. In it is the paradigm that there is plenty out there and enough to spare for everyone. It results in sharing of prestige, recognition, profits, decision making. It opens possibilities, options, alternatives, and creativity. In other words, people who live with an abundance mentality and who operate out of a deep knowing of their measurable worth live life loved. And that's pretty cool. So I guess that means they're happier people. <laughs> you know, if, you, if, you, if you're living, if your thought process is, is oh, there's not going to be enough, there's not going right. to be enough, you know, let me keep all of the profits, let me keep all of the praise, let me keep all of the, you know, things like that, then you're not sharing it. And I think, I told you this before, and I think you are perfect for the uh, mentality of abundance because you are always free-flowing with um, praise for people and lifting people up and um, just your thought process that there's plenty out there for everybody. Well, there is. I, know. I mean, look at all the realtors out there now. I mean, if you're in the real estate business, you better be prepared to, you know, team up with other real estate professionals because there's 60,000 new ones in the last two years. And if you don't believe there's an abundance of business right. out there and families to help. And it's the, and it's, I think it's the it's your thought process. You know, where where is your thoughts? Where is your brain? Is it oh this is all for me 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 or is it it's okay because there's plenty here. Right. You know, it's it's really a lot your thoughts it, what is it the um, where where your mind goes the man follows and woman. <laughs> um, so where your thought process is, that's where you go. So if your thought process is for you know, scarcity, like there's not enough out there, then that's kind of the way you're going to live your life. However, if your thought process is, oh, there's plenty and, and it's abundant and it's wealth and it's, you know, free flowing, then that's where your efforts will flow. And, and I think that's amazing. And you know what? I have to tell you, like I have some of my, and I know if it's happened to you, some of my best friends in the world don't use me for services <laughs> because they were going to get a better deal somewhere else, you know, and then they don't want to get it. And, you know, know. and I'm always like, and I always want to, you know, you want to give that little dig, you know, especially they go somewhere else for their financing, for their investments or right. their real estate closings, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm like, oh, cool. How'd they do for you? You know, oh, they're really good. And yeah, did you get, you know, and then, oh, what rate did you get? And I'm, and I go, oh, that's a great rate. Oh, man, you missed out, but ours was cheaper this month. <laughs> you know, little things you can throw in. But I'm okay with it if they go somewhere else. I get I it, you know, because there's a lot of people do what you do and what we do. Right. You know, that's... So, and, and, and it all comes down to where your mindset is, and that's kind of what some of the um, the seven tips are of, um, you know, highly um, effective people. So... Their habits is really <laughs> habits. what they are. So let's start with. So we're go, we'll we'll go through them relatively quickly for you guys. Hang on, I need my glasses again. Like he's looking for his too. So all right. So the first one is be proactive. Take responsibility for your action. I'm sorry. Take responsibility for your reaction to your experience. Take the initiative to respond positively and improve the situation. Recognize your circle of influence and circle of concern. Two different things, circle of influence and circle of concern. Focus your responses and initiates on the center of your influence and constantly work to expand it. Don't sit and wait for uh, in a reactive mode, waiting for problems to happen 
circle of concern, if you're sitting there waiting, uh-oh, when's the shoe going to drop, right? How many times right. do you hear that? Then that's where you're going to live, more or less. But be proactive and, um, and don't wait in the reactive, but um, recognize your circle and of influence. I, and I think you're good at that because, like I'm going to give you an example, on a mortgage file, for example, you know that something's wrong on the front end and it's going to go into underwriting because you discovered a flaw, let's call right. it, or a challenge. <laughs> and you're like, uh-oh, we got this. But nobody knows about it yet, but you're already trying to fix it before yeah. the underwriter gets it and says, oh, that's a problem, and the borrower finds out about it. And you're good at planting that seed to a borrower to say, hey, you know, we noticed you had a bankruptcy right. or you had a foreclosure, right. but, but you know, but you said no on the application. Yeah, so you lied to us. So yeah, you have to be proactive. I don't quite on, say it that way, but you know, and I think you have to be but, proactive on growing any business. Right. You know, what are you doing to help grow it? Right. Are you? So you have to be proactive. That's the bottom line. Is be yeah. proactive. You know, don't wait for the other shoe to drop, as as the saying goes. But be proactive and make things happen, and make things happen in the way you want them to go, instead of waiting for the bad stuff to happen. Okay. You want me to cover the next one? I do. Go. So I'm not going to read it. But okay. I'm just going to elaborate on it. Oh, you just said this. Yeah, this is a good one for so you. So <laughs> begin with an end in mind, because, you know what, the way to have something is to have a goal, okay? And if you have a goal in mind, envision it. Put it before you, whether it's a new home, a new car, a retirement, a family vacation. Right. You have to put that out there. This is my goal. I want that. And then you have to kind of do it backwards and say, okay, in order to get this new Lexus, you can tell I've been looking at new cars, <laughs> I have Lexus. to do this much more business because it's going to be this much in payments or I need mm -hmm. this much cash to buy it. So if you envision that end before you begin, then you can have a goal and say, well, this is why. It gives you a purpose, per se. Right. This is why I'm going to do this because I want this for my family. Right. I want... You know, and it doesn't have to be a material thing per se. No, it doesn't. It could just be, you know, just retirement period. You know, yeah. at some point, the older we get. Yeah, you know? but I, I believe it's easier for people to envision a material thing. It, it is. It really is. It is. So if, if you, you want have, a boat or you want a motorcycle or whatever, you got to make the steps to do it. You want a bigger but, house for your but children. But the bottom line is have something. Have something in mind, right? Yeah. You know, don't just wander through life aimlessly, you know, drudging day after day after day of the same job or whatever. Do something different. You know, set something that this is what I want or this is where I see myself in 12 months. This is where I want to be in 12 months. And then go for it. And then the more you have that in mind and put it up, stick it on your mirror in the bathroom right. or whatever it is so that you can see it and envision it every single mm -hmm. day. We, we, we did in one of my Bible study groups these vision boards. I know everybody's done a lot of vision boards. And, I'm, you know, I, at, at first I didn't like it at all. And I'm like, really? So this is pretty much just like doing goals except in pictures. Yeah. You know? but, but it was wonderful. And you know what? i got to tell you, it. I have it hanging in my bathroom. And I look at it every single day. And I'm like, yep, I did that. And I did that. And I did that. And it's really nice. It's Do you remember when encouraging. We, when we were doing the Lunch and Learns a few years ago, we might get two realtors, maybe four. Six would be a really big one. Now, if we're not at 70, we're like, oh, what happened? You know, yeah. everybody so on vacation. Envision. Yeah. So, you know, we wanted to meet more realtors so we could help more families right. ultimately. Right. So it was. That's the education, 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 because yeah. that's the big thing. Yeah. So. You know, it's uh, the other thing that he says on, on these two, on number one and two. So he said, um, basically, number, uh, sorry, hang on, where is it? I'm sorry, it goes on to this. Okay, so that was number two. So habit number two advises you that you are the programmer. You program your life, right? You are going to set up what you want in the future, and you're the programmer of that. So item number three is first things first. Talks about the difference between leadership and management. Leadership in the outside world begins with personal vision and personal leadership, like we were just talking about. Talks about what is important and what is urgent. So this goes through the priorities that you give things in your life. So urgent and important. Important is do. Urgent but not important is the planning stage. Urgent but not important, I'm sorry, urgent but important is the planning stage. Urgent, urgent but not important is the delegating. And urgent but not important is eliminate. So the things that are urgent and important, you do them right away. Things that are um, 
not urgent, but they're still important. Those are the things you're going to plan for. You're going to make your list and you're going to plan long term for doing something like that. Urgent, but not important. Somebody else can do that. Delegate that away. And of course, the not urgent, not important. Why are you doing it in the first place? Just eliminate it. It's about setting those priorities. So it's setting those priorities. So it says that if, if in number two, you're the programmer, in number, in, in number three, write the program. So it's your job to do these things and write that program with, again, to make number two happen, where you're going to be 12 months from now or whatever it is, then you have to write that program. And prioritizing is, is a big part of that. That's good. I think, I think you've... Um You've covered that very well, Dylan. Thank you. All right, so we <laughs> I didn't. Stephen Covey well, did. <laughs> I know, but you covered. I'm just reading. <laughs> you covered Stephen Covey's principles very well. I loved it. I thought this it. was. Yeah. I thought this was very good. Because he does have at least seven good principles of he highly does. effective people. He does. Yes. All right. So number four on our list is think win win. Our, you know what? Again, it's, all a mindset, right? It is it's a your mindset. mindset. I mean, if you go into something thinking, this isn't going to work, this is going to fail, how is it really? What are your right. chances of succeeding? You right. know, um, gosh, I think about our community events, Bowling for Boobs, How the Grinch Saved <laughs> Christmas. Did we ever go into those thinking they wouldn't work? Did we ever once have a doubt, say, no. nobody's going to come to these crazy charity events? No. no. We thought they'd no. be great, and we've made them greater right. with the help of the entire community, of course. But we always had that, this is going to be it's amazing. All, and it's all about the mindset because yes. we've always said, you know what? This is, you know, even if you raise a dollar, it's more than you had yesterday. Exactly. And you're really good at that, you know, we, you positive know outlook. Our goal things. was 10. We got a buck. All right. <laughs> so what? We have a buck more, right? That's right. It's that win-win mentality. And if you have that, if you're in real estate, if you're in car sales, whatever you're in, if you set that goal and have that winning mentality and wake up every morning, drink your cup of coffee right. and think, what am I going to do to win today? You're probably going exactly. to, your chances of winning are much greater. Excellent thing to ask yourself every single day. Another thing to put on the mirror, what am I going to do to win today, right? Yes. That's Again, if you set yourself up for that right from the beginning, you're doing good. I, um, I love that. Win-win attitude. Think win-win. That's number four on our list. Number five. I like this one too. Well, I like them all. Seek first to understand and then to be understood. So this is really good because we all know that, um, what's the old saying? God gave you two ears and one mouth so you mm -hmm. can listen twice as much as you talk. So if you listen to the person first and understand what their needs are, okay, I want to buy a house. Well, what kind of house? And you know, that kind of thing. So you're going to ask them questions and you're going to listen to what's important. So they want a three bedroom house, but the most important thing in that whole thing is they want to be in a certain school district or something like that. You guys are all good at that, but I thought that this was, and that's, be, you have to do that first and then be understood. So understand them first and then be understood I, yourself. And the key word in all of this to do this is being empathetic. Yes. If you don't have empathy in what you do, mm -hmm. You're not going to have an understanding of, you know, you're not going to feel for that other person. And you have to truly be, have that. Because people can sense that. Yeah, right away gotta, they can sense you that. You need to care about your customer. You know what's so funny? When I, I worked in um, Radio Shack back in my retail days, in big corporation, very successful, and they were, there were more Radio Shacks than McDonald's. And they're, True. You know, they're gone today. Leadership changed and the company right. went, pff, the market changed for whatever reasons, but we had, you know, sales goals every month. And you as a manager, you knew which managers you didn't want to follow because you knew that they were good and what made them good, even though you, and, and you wanted to mimic them, but you necessarily couldn't. And people were afraid to follow me because I always had sales gains, but I wasn't afraid to follow people with big gains because I knew. It makes you better. I knew I would do better. And I listened to my customers. I would follow up with right. them. I was empathetic to their situations. If something was wrong with a product, I'd be like, 
bring it back. We'll take care of it. Yeah. You, know. you, you have to you have to listen. That's the thing. So it says empathetic listening to genuine, genuinely understand a person which can compels them to reciprocate. Yeah. See, that's the reason why. You're not just being empathetic, because, but then they will reciprocate the listening and take an open mind to be influenced by you. And let's face it, when you're in sales, the whole thing is about influencing the people, your circle of influence, Absolutely. right? So in order for that to happen, they have to, um, you have to be empathetic so that they will listen to you and then they will reciprocate. That's, That's a real good. important one, I thought. All right, let's get on to number six here because we're running out of time. Wow, that went fast. So synergize. So um, I got to tell you, synergize to me, teamwork. Right? Can't do it alone. You cannot. You <laughs> Takes cannot. a village. I don't care if you're in real estate, car sales, whatever you're in. I know in the mortgage business, you can never do it alone. You no. can't do what you do alone. No. We have a great team of people. You can't do title business alone. No. We have processors. You have loan partners. Yeah. You have, you know, the same. It's a lot of work and, to be done. And in real estate, you know, now you have transaction coordinators. Right. You know, you can't give the level of service and be successful without exactly. having that teamwork. And to me, teamwork is also being in a network of other businesses. Like in real estate, we look at our insurance person. We mm -hmm. look at our title person. Right. You know, we look at... Um, they're a part of the team as they're well. They're part of the team. The real estate professional, they're all part of that team. Even sometimes the tax preparer, because, you know, you need yeah. you need their numbers. Especially and, right now, yeah. we need tax returns yeah. done. Yeah. So, you need them done quick. So you want to <laughs> synergize with that and maybe, you know, get in a networking group, get in a couple. Right. And synergize with other people of like minds yes, and find people who can be your power partners. I exactly. Think that's so key. Um, and then the last one on our list, which is what you and I are definitely all about, is education, 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 continual improvement. The final habit is that of continuous improvement in both personal and interpersonal spheres of influence. Balance and renew your resources daily, I added that part, energy and health to create a sustainable, long-term, effective lifestyle. It primarily emphasizes exercise for physical renewal, good prayer, med um, meditation or yoga, and good reading for mental renewal. <clears throat> it also mentions service to society for spiritual re renewal. And then I wrote down here, never stop moving and never stop learning. Education, education, education. So, and and renew your body. So get rest. Don't be a workaholic and you know stay up all night doing things. You need your your body needs rest. Your mind needs rest, and so that they can continue to you grow. Got, you gotta like yourself. Yes. You know, exercise is key. Um, having a good home life is key. Mm -hmm. Getting a dog. <laughs> it's, it's we good. had we it's had good. a little puppy visit us yeah, today, and it was good nice. Therapy. Everybody I, likes I know that. that's what I said. I, I called him and good. I said, it's soothing. "Yes, we, ha we have Skyly therapy today." <laughs> it's soothing, you know, little things like that. It it, it makes your mind fresh. It makes you it feel does. better, and it's going to make you want to work. And when harder when, when you, you rest your body and your mind and your soul and your spirit, it it gives you a chance to grow because yes. then it, it it you know kind of decompress, and now you have room to fill more in. It's kind of like that jug that they put the rocks oh boy, in, is yeah. it full? And yeah. then they put the pebbles in, is yeah. it full? And then they put, put the, the sand, sand in, in. is yeah. it full? And then the water. So there's always room for more. Um, but you can't do it if you're all stressed out and you know running in a million different directions. You have to take time to rest and renew yourself and renew your mind and I agree. always learn. I mean, you're great. You do your... You know your Bible studies, and you're I always, do. You know, it that's makes you feel how fresh. This got started. And, and um, you know, I'm in the gym. I love playing racquetball. I love playing my music. That's my therapy. Right. But when I'm working, I want to be engaged and really take care of my customers. Well, so. it it makes us face our our work day. I think uh, with a better mind, sure. a better mindset, and um, things to learn. So I thought those things were good. I hope you guys enjoyed them too. Um, you know, you know he, Stephen Covey is very good, I think. The, I learned a lot from these. Sometimes it's good just to get back to the basics, you know, not just the, oh, wear a name badge and, you know, do some mailers and, you know, go door knocking or something like that. But really, what is it between people? And, and actually what he said, I, I really like this in the beginning, if I can read real quick, right? Um, he says there's a difference. Um, he argues against what he calls the personality ethic, and he sees it. 
um, as prevalent in many modern self-help books. He promotes what he labels the character ethic, aligning one's values with so-called universal and timeless principles. These are universal and timeless principles. And it's not so much about um, the personality, although that does have a lot. And I love those personality things. I think that there's a lot to be said for those. But really the character. The character of who you are and the character of who the person is that you're selling to. So my famous phrase is not only do you need to know what's selling, but who's buying. Right. So you need to know your buyer and what makes them tick. What are they all about? So right. Exactly. Some great, great tips from I Stephen know. Covey here. You know, I was good like, book. Seven yeah, habits. Book. What is it? Seven habits of highly effective people. Great book. If you um, go online, I'm sure you can get it at Amazon. Yeah, you can get it. <laughs> get anything at Amazon. A popular, so popular. Love book. Amazon. All right, let's talk about what's going on in the community right now. What do we got going? Well, so we have our lunch and learn next yep, month. Lunch and learn is going to be great. It it's March the 10th, 10th. So put it down on your calendar right now. It will be a full house. Uh, we have attorney Jenny Sieg, who is an estate. Oh. Oh, yes, and we love. You know what? She was one. Of, we've had her probably about two years ago, and she is one of the most requested person the p persons that we've oh, had. Everybody loved her. She had so much information. It was very good. You know, you guys have all faced it when you know you're dealing with an estate issue. You know, somebody passed away, and you know how does the contract get going, and you know probate and all that stuff. So Ginny answers all those questions, and she's a wonderful and person. She does a great. And that job. is again at Carabas. As always, again we're consistent. It is at Carabas in Port Ritchie on 19. Please RSVP. Let us know if you can come just so that we can have a, a pretty decent, you know, pretty pretty on target head count so that uh, the waiter at Carabas doesn't, doesn't get overwhelmed. <laughs> I know. When he sees all these people coming in, Joe. We love you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching, Joe. <laughs> anyway, but it, it should be a great lunch and learn. Yes. I'm looking forward to that one, too. So yep. anyway, that's our show this week. But you know what? Wait, the other thing that we have coming oh. up, Taste of Trinity. Oh, Sorry, I geez. thought you were going to do it. I WPBA, our very favorite, um, our networking group and charity of choice, um, WPBA, West Pasco Business Association. It's on having March the 7th. I didn't forget it. Taste of Trinity. <laughs> yeah, and it cool. is at Seven Springs Middle School? Middle School, yeah. Middle Go school. on WPBA.biz. Um, yeah. You'll find information It's a great event. It. Lots of yep. food, lots Share of vendors, our lots show. of people. Like it, send it out to your friends. We love you guys. We are today and every day. Moving forward. Have See you a great next week. week.